How does your grip width during the bench press affect which muscles you train? The conventional view on this is very simple. Close grip trains the triceps because your elbows are more tucked and your, your pecs essentially bring the elbow towards the midline of the body. So they're not really doing that. And you are training the triceps and then a wide grip trains the pecs well because the pecs can work very well. They're bringing the elbow close to the midline of the body, but there's no resistance against the triceps. So the conventional view is that a wide grip bench press is very good for the pecs and does not do very much for the triceps, whereas a close grip is almost like a triceps isolation exercise and trains the delts. Um, well, everything trains the delts, but it trains the triceps and the pecs not so much. This view is not entirely wrong, but it is very simplified. Based on a recent new study, I'm going into a bit more detail in this video on bench press biomechanics to help you understand what exactly happens when you change grip width and why the conventional view is in uh, several ways incorrect. Let's start with some basic biomechanics on the pecs and the triceps. The triceps extend the elbow. They straighten your arm. So if you're, you, I have a dumbbell in my hand right now and imagine I'm lying down on a bench, then there is a lot of resistance. This is the moment arm and this is the resistance. So there is a moment against um, elbow extension. Your triceps has to resist that, producing an elbow extension moment against the elbow flexion moment. And if that moment is greater than that of the resistance, you lift the weight. Now, during a close grip bench press, if your elbows are far apart like this, then you're pressing like this. It's, it's very simple. The triceps has to be very active. And during a close grip bench press where your elbow is a little bit like this, so the um, your hand is not directly over the elbow, which is usually the case, it's more like this because you're pressing in a J-curve, then it also makes sense that the triceps is very active. However, why is the triceps active during a bench press where your hand is directly over the elbow? Because then there is no moment arm against, uh, no moment arm for elbow flexion. So the triceps theoretically would not have to produce any extension moment. And even worse with a wide grip, when you're like this, I'm exaggerating things obviously, then there's actually an, a negative moment. You would affect that you would train your biceps because you're, this is the force that you're producing. Whereas like with a narrow grip like this, the triceps is active, but with a wide grip like this, you would theoretically, you could think that you have to train the biceps because the biceps is the one that produces this movement. Now, that is not the case. And that's what this new study corrects in a lot of previous insights because there is horizontal force production. When you, you have a barbell, so imagining I have a barbell here, and you're bench pressing, and you're, you're grabbing a barbell, you're producing force with the triceps, the barbell cannot move. Like the barbell is fixed. And that's also what a cue from powerlifters comes in to spread the barbell apart. Because if you try to spread the barbell apart, you're actually producing a triceps force like this, which is clearly a triceps dominant movement. That, that force is lateral force into the barbell, horizontal force. Since the barbell cannot move, this is a, bit, this is a little bit technical, and I'll show you an image uh, here that shows the actual technical physics of it, but intuitively what happens is because the barbell cannot move, essentially that force is, makes it easier to produce upward force. You, you can think of it as you cannot move the barbell out to the side, so what is the movement that can take place? Well, it pushes it up. Effectively, your, your pecs and your triceps synergistically work to produce the uh, upward movement that you need during a bench press. More technically put, the horizontal force production creates uh, changes the resultant force factor of the barbell, thereby changing the moment arms of the uh, the moment arms on the shoulder and on the elbow. But like I said, intuitively, I think it's easier to think of it like spreading the bar apart, basically because it's not possible to move the bar horizontally. And if you think of what, ha what happens, if you cannot produce this, it becomes upward movement. It helps you press the weight up because you cannot press the weight out to the sides. So that horizontal force production helps explain why the triceps can still be active during a barbell bench press, even though there is, if you look at simple biomechanics, no moment arm against triceps or uh, elbow extension. So here you can see a more formal image summarizing what I was explaining about horizontal force production. You can see that the horizontal force production, if you look at my mouse, and the vertical force production together change the resultant force factor, which is now diagonal instead of going straight down as the gravitational resistance would 
perhaps lead you to think it would be, and many previous papers and analyses have uh, assumed. And this changes the moment arms on the elbow and on the shoulder. Now, uh, in this specific study, they used the following four um, grip widths. You can see the medium grip, the wide grip, the narrow grip with the elbows tucked, and the narrow grip with the elbows flared. And I like that they make this distinction because many studies, they just say it's a close grip bench press, but then don't further specify how you do it. And actually there can be pretty big differences between how you perform it, uh, depending on whether you tuck the elbows or not. Now, let's look at the results. Here you can see the, um, the kinetic variables, which is basically the uh, measurements of force. And the first thing I would highlight here is the lateral to vertical force production ratio. It's almost zero, meaning there are basically no vertical forces at play during the narrow grip bench presses. But in the medium and the wide grip, they are very substantial. In the medium grip, it's almost 20%. And on the wide grip, it's almost 40% of total force production uh, is horizontal. So that's um, a pretty big effect. And as a result, you see that the elbow net joint moments, so the forces acting on the elbow, which is a measure of how much force the triceps has to resist, are actually quite similar with different grip widths. The, the differences are not huge. And um, we can see that at the shoulder, the forces are a bit lower, um, quite a bit lower, in fact, with the narrow grips, which is uh, to be expected. And we can look at the, the elbow normalized net joint moments, which is a measure of the elbow net joint moment, which I highlighted here, relative to the force production capacity. Now in this study, I have some issues with how they measure that because you see that they used a standing posi a seated position and this actually changes the force production capacity because if the joint is in a different position and the muscle is in a different position, the length tension relationship actually changes the force production and it can also change the internal moment arms so this is not completely accurate, but it should roughly be the same bias in all conditions. So let, let's assume for the sake of simplicity that these, these numbers are quite accurate. And then we can see that the triceps is effectively, you can summarize this as at about 60% capacity in all conditions. And crucially, because of this increased horizontal force production, the triceps can engage even with a wide grip. And we see that it's working basically just as hard as with the narrow grips, even in the wide grip and the medium grip conditions. And for the shoulder, we see that again, just like we expect based on the simple moment arms, because the elbows are more tucked and there's more, um, um, th there's less reliance essentially on the pecs. With the narrow grips, we see that the shoulder demands are quite a bit lower um, with the narrow um, grips, both of them, and especially with the elbows in as opposed to the arrows out. Now, that's kinetic data. They also collected uh, EMG data, so electromyography. And it's also very interesting to look at that because it's essentially another measure of how hard the muscle is working. And then you can see that the lateral head of the triceps uh, did not have major differences, but there was actually uh, a decrease in the wide grip, even though the total elbow seemed to, based on the kinetic variables, seem to work just as hard. But there's a bit of a discrepancy there. Overall, I would say probably the, um, the wide grip, if you go really wide, like hands outside the elbows, it would decrease triceps activity based on this, uh, but only in the lateral head, not in the long head. And you can also see that the lateral head is substantially more active than the long head. Uh, I made previous posts on this explaining why that is, that the long head is not that well trained by a bench press. And I'll summarize it a little bit more uh, in, the, um, in the conclusion of the study. And then you can see that deltoids are always highly active um, we, I wouldn't actually put too much talk in the percentage of MVIC here. That's for technical reasons, but they're basically always similarly active. Let me put it that way. And then nicely for the pecs, they looked at all three, uh, or they looked at both heads and actually divided them into three categories. So the upper pecs, the clavicular head, was similarly active regardless of grip width. And then um, in this case, there was actually a slight decrease with the white grip. I would not put much stock into that. Uh, I don't think that that's going to be uh, replicable. And then with the medium, the sternocostal head, which is kind of the, the middle packs, you could say, they were again, again quite similar, even more similar than the uh, clavicular head. 
and then the sternocostal or the abdominal head, you can see that here there was actually um, a difference, a substantial difference with the narrow grips having substantially less activity. And that makes perfect sense because when your elbows are already tucked or you're relying more on the triceps, there is not as much demand anymore for shoulder flexion. The upper packs can still engage very well because they are also shoulder flexors, but the lower packs don't have much of a role anymore. It's, it's very good to differentiate between that, that it's specifically the lower packs that are not as well trained if you go narrow uh, with your grip. One more factor that comes into play when extrapolating these things, EMG activity and net joint moments, which muscles are active, how much force are they producing relative to their total force production. To extrapolate that to long-term strength development and muscle growth, we also need to look at range of motion. This depends a lot on the specifics of how you perform the exercise, but in general, a close grip will slightly emphasize the triceps, especially if you're, you're gonna be performing the exercise all the way like this, or if you're gonna be using a close grip because you're getting more range of motion at the bottom, you're basically closing the elbow angles more. The more you close the elbow angle, the, so the further you close the elbow angle, the more uh, range of motion you get and the more length change you get in the triceps, which can also potentially stimulate some stretch mediated hypertrophy. I don't think that will be a big factor here, but it might slightly emphasize the triceps more. Uh, for the pecs, it doesn't make a huge difference, but probably you're gonna get a better stretch when you're performing the movements with a wider grip and if at least your elbows can go all the way down. So that might also slightly contribute to a wider grip emphasizing the pecs and a more narrow grip emphasizing the triceps, but it also probably won't be a very big difference. So bottom line, how does your grip width affect which muscles you train during the bench press? Well, let's start with the shoulders. The shoulders, the anterior deltoids, because only the anterior deltoids are gonna be significantly trained with any kind of bench press, are active no matter what you do. Wide grip, narrow grip, your front delts are always going to be highly active. The triceps is actually going to be very similarly active no matter what you do. And for one, the bench press is not a great exercise in my view for the triceps to begin with. I compiled a research overview earlier on which looked at bench press studies and assessed how much growth there is in the triceps and the pecs. And you see that actually the pecs grow a lot more than the triceps. And there's also a nice study by Brandau that shows that the long head is not very well trained because it's a biarticulate muscle and it also aids in shoulder extension. So excessive activity of the long head of the triceps would actually help pull the elbow down instead of pressing it up. That explains why in general, I think you don't see that much growth from bench pressing in the triceps, specifically not in the long head, the rear head. If you are bench pressing to train the triceps and you will always have some triceps recruitment, so you need to know how much there is there actually isn't much of a difference between pretty narrow grips and wide grips. If you go really wide, like to the point where your hands are outside the elbows, essentially, then there will be a bit of a reduction probably uh, in triceps activity because there is, um, there is no direct uh, elbow flexion moment anymore. Like it would be the biceps rather than the triceps that produces that movement. However, this is almost completely offset, it seems, by the triceps ability to still engage in horizontal force production, which in turn indirectly helps you lift the weight up. So your grip width actually doesn't affect muscle activity much in, certainly not in the long head, it's, all, it's never gonna be super well trained by a bench press and it doesn't affect muscle activity uh, much either in the lateral head until you go really wide when there, there does seem to be uh, a bit of a decrease. Now for the pecs, the conventional wisdom is true, but specifically for the lower pecs, because if you do a wide grip kind of bench press, then what happens is that the pecs are mainly active as horizontal shoulder flexors. So they, they produce this movement. And that's great, you, you train all the pec fibers pretty well, all the uh, parts, all the heads, all the muscle fibers. And then if you move your grip in, then the clavicular head, the upper pecs, is still going to be very active because it's also a shoulder flexor. So it also pulls the elbow up. It doesn't just bring it to the side, but also brings it up it's still going to be highly active, no matter your grip width. The lower pecs, however, they do not do this. And in fact, they have the, the opposite movement pattern. That's why they can assist in something like a straight arm pull down, depending on your grip width and the like. The, the lower pecs, they really need, uh, for maximal activity, they really need that horizontal shoulder flexion. And if you're, you're not doing that because your elbows are very tucked, or in general, if you're using a, a very narrow grip, which is much more um, reliant on the triceps, relatively speaking, then the lower pecs are not going to be engaged much. 
the upper packs are. So the conventional wisdom you don't for full pack development is kind of true, but specifically for the lower packs, not for the upper packs. All right, I think that summarizes everything you need to know how about how your grip width influences the biomechanics of your bench press and as a result, which muscles you train. I hope this helps you optimize your training program.